Hello, I'm Bill, and today I'm going to show you how I built a geodesic dome for my Machine and Krieger raccoon diorama. This was originally just going to be a display base, but after building the kit, I just kind of dug the, the little Machine and Krieger and then got this idea of building this geodesic dome where he's looking into it. I eventually figured out it's just a series of triangles in a pattern. So I cut those out on the table saw and I'll show you how. For cutting the acrylic, I use my finest tooth blade and then a zero clearance blade guard so that it supports all the acrylic and helps to get a smoother cut. The fence is set to 60 degrees and I'm just aiming for right at the top of that angle and that'll give me a nice equilateral triangle all the way around. I am going to now try to construct a, a substructure underneath this to support it. I'm trying to figure out what that's going to look like. But I do know that I'm going to need multiples of these. So how I made this, I just I kind of hold it in this hand. And this one, I'm going to kind of bend it over my thumb. And then as it's bent over my thumb, I'm just going to draw it out like that. And see, it just kind of bends. So now you just continue to do that. It sort of heats up a little bit. And then I can get that. And as it cools down, it'll stay. This is really fun. I have this book. A uh, Visual Dictionary of Architecture by Francis D.K. Ching. Uh, it was given to me by my father-in-law, and it is an absolutely fantastic book. i got to tell you. Uh, Miko, thank you very much. Right there is Geodesic Dome. This explains it, you know, visually right here, and it's helping me figure out what i got to do. To figure out the size of the arc, I'm taking the base of the diorama right here, and I'm just kind of drawing right on it, and I'm, I'm kind of getting a feel for, you know, what I want the space to look like. I'm also considering how big round or what that arc needs to be to support what I'm trying to do with those acrylic panels. The main purpose for the template is repeatability. You know, I want to be able to make multiples of these. I, I think I end up making five and they're all relatively the same. Now, along with making those five the same, I also needed to make a bunch of cuts of this thin, kind of tall um, I-beam that's going to span those two longer sections. And so I made this little cutting jig so that I can also cut those to the same length every single time. And then by reversing them, laying them flat between those two pieces and gluing them in, sometimes I had to sand, you know, to kind of just get it just right. I was able to create a, a real nice little structural section here. Now, the thing that I'm trying to do and, and what I'm achieving here is you'll see if you look real close, it's like a zigzag pattern or creating triangles. Now, as I built each section, you know, and, and joined everything together, I was having to cut these, but I used the acrylic triangles as, you know, supports to get the proper angle and the proper lengths for the lengths of, of structure that I was having to cut and then, you know, glue in here. So it took a little time, but I'm pretty happy with the result. Okay, I think that's that's the layout. I think I need a thin little bit down there as a floor, or I'll just do a, a lab floor. That's probably what I'll do. Right on. I am digging it. Today I am working on the structure and I'm adding bolts. So I got a little paint on here, makes it a little easier to work on. Um, and 
I'm adding these little plates and then remember I did a video last week about these Meng bolts. Um, they're really cool. Here's the name. So Meng bolt heads. And these big ones, this line right here, those are on the base plate down here. You know, it sits like this. And then the rivets are on the opposite side. Cut those rivets off and then those get applied down here. And you just literally cut them off and then use a little, you know, thin glue, glue them on there. And they look kind of messy right now, but when you get some paint on them, boy, it looks just fantastic. So, um, yeah. So I got a bunch more to do, just all these little plates in here. And then uh, this thing will go and get another shot of this black. And then I'll go on to some white paint. Once I got the paint on it, again, I could really see a lot better. Um, and then when I went to this kind of an off-white, it really popped. So uh, after this, I start doing some rusting and I start out trying to do like a little bit of grit because I want it to look like it's kind of bubbling the paint off. So that's what this is. I'm putting a little bit of uh, sanded grout, a little German red brown and Mod Podge together, mix them all up. And then I start applying this to some of the cracks and crevices uh, and you know in the lower recesses of uh, this I don't want to go all the way up because I want to show something where it's corroding lower a little bit more than up high now the one color that kind of surprised me a little bit was black when I started adding black because I'm, I'm doing this like in layers I start with the red brown the German red brown then I'll go with some lighter colors and I'm, I'm blotching around these areas but then when I came back, like the last thing with the black, that tied everything together. That looks like something where it's not only rust, the black means there's some other corrosive agent in there. I'm really happy how this came out. You know, I wanted these uh, rusty places to also show a little bit of corrosion. This is supposed to have been exposed to the elements for like two, if not three years. And, and so I needed to make sure, you know, that I, I saw some real aging there. And then this next thing here, I'm doing the, um, the acrylic panels. I wanted to show that they're individually framed. They need to have an individual frame around them. Then I'll mount them to the outside of the superstructure, and um, and and then I can start weathering them and and putting some, you know, weather stripping and all that kind of stuff in them. Yeehaw, that ain't so bad, I like it. I talk a lot about working without a plan, and that's just my normal thing. But one of the things about that is when I'm, I'm doing something brand new like this, I've never done it before, there are times where I'm really anxious. I don't know if something's going to gonna work. And boy, I'm just, I'm thrilled that these panels came out the way that I was hoping. Um, they fit on there nice. I glued them in. And then after they were all set in and, and, and I kind of took a, you know, a breath of relief, um, then it was on to weather stripping. So this was another thing that I was, I had no clue on, you know, how am I going to do this? I have no idea. Well, I came up with this. It's leather 
it had the right weight. It had the, you know, it fell properly. It looked right. It looked to be like, you know, big, huge weather stripping in scale, but it had come out of this, you know, uh, between the panels because of, you know, all the weathering that it's had. So anyway, uh, really happy with it. And um, yeah, after this, it's it's really, it's onto some paint. I really like this picture. This is Carlos discovering the facility and looking in and then his lights shining through. But to get this shot to work, you know, with it all dusty and all that kind of stuff, the painting that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have to make some masks so that, you know, I can paint over it and then peel these things away. So that's what I'm doing here. The original idea here was to have some pretty heavy dirt, not just dusting, but you know, there'd been wind and events that, that really brought a lot of dirt. So you couldn't see through and it was like really crusted on top and like piles of dirt. Well, that didn't really turn out to be what I ended up with because once I saw how it was kind of, you know, blocking the light and how this worked, I, I thought this is just great. So once I peel these guys off and then I saw through it, I knew I'd made the right decision. We're really just getting started on this thing. So if you want to see more and maybe even some more recent content, hit me up on Fridays. We've got a really cool live stream and I answer all your questions.